Okay, here is section 5.3 uh, about tangents, and you'll notice that it is quite short. Uh, in the textbook, it's 256 to 262. It is a small section of the, of the textbook. Um, recall that tan of theta is equal to sine of theta or over cos of theta. Um, if, if you remember way back when, when we used to think of uh, so ka toa, tan was opposite over adjacent um, and in our case when we think of these uh, unit circle the opposite if this is my angle over here then the opposite one is my y value and the uh, adjacent one is my x value and you'll remember that y is the same thing on the unit circle as as sine and x is the same thing as cos so this opposite over adjacent is works out to the same thing as sine over cos a little bit messy and I'll be needing this a bit later so I'll just erase that um, note that tan of theta is the slope of the line through point P so if starting at the origin this line that I drew here the slope of that line is the same thing as tan because you know I guess I'm rewriting the thing I just wrote here so uh, this would be the rise over here and that's going to be the same thing as my y value which will be the same thing as sine and this is my run uh, which is the same thing as the cos, so that the slope is the same thing as tan. That's pretty cool. So right now, what would you think that that slope would be? It looks to me like at this point here, which is about 45 degrees, or perhaps uh, pi over 4, right? It seems to me that this slope looks to be about 1, so we're going to check that out in just a little while. We'll uh, create a table of values for tan and then we're going to graph and see what it takes what it looks like it looks remarkably different than both sine and cos so we will do values uh, around the unit circle um, I think if we pick every pi over 4 might be a good way to go okay so these will be our spots that we're going to pick Okay, so let's just remember then what these spots would be. So this one, the x value is 1, so the cos is 1, and the sine would be 0, right? Uh, over here, I think if I just drop over here, I can remember, oh, well, my cos or my x value is negative 1 and 0. Uh, and at the top and the bottom, this is when my x is 0 or my cos is 0, and my y is a positive 1. Oh, there we go, positive 1. And down here on the bottom, I got a 0 and a negative 1. And so <clears throat> what about my uh, pi over 4 spots here? You remember that this one is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. And really, they stay the same, except for here, uh, I've got a negative and then a, a positive. Otherwise, it's I just don't feel like writing it out again. It's negative root 2 over 2 and positive root 2 over 2. And here, they're both negative. And here the uh, the cos or the x value is positive, and the y or the sine value is negative. Okay, so let's go through here and consider those spots. So um, first of all, let's not get too confused. I could have wrote y equals tan of x. I could also, instead of x, I could also have written, uh, you know, alternatively, I could have written theta over here for my angle. So I could also have written a theta. So just remember, what does that mean? What does this x mean in this case? The x means as we go around the unit circle, um, the x is the amount that we're rotating. So the x is this, it's this amount of rotation, it's that angle. So x is the angles we're going across. It's not my x of my co uh, coordinate. Uh, again, so I'm plugging in a value of x into some function called tan, right? And what comes out in this case is the tan of x or uh, the, the y value. So this goes in and this comes out. So I say, if I rotate x amount, what's the in this case sine over cos what's the y value what's over the x value so the first one we'll do is when we rotate zero so this is zero radians okay and so remember that this is going to be equal to my sine over my cos this is doing funny things i'm just going to pause and see if i can fix it i'll be 
All right, so I had to delete that table, and we're going to kind of start over again. So uh, when x is 0, in other words, when I'm starting at this spot right over here, my uh, sine value is 0, and my cos value is 1. So tan will be 0 over 1, which is equal to 0. And another way to think of this, remember that the tan is the same thing as the slope of the line that starts at the origin and goes to that spot. So a horizontal line, a horizontal line like this has a slope of zero, right? It, when it's horizontal because it doesn't uh, it doesn't rise at all. The rise is zero divided by any number of runs. So that's going to be a slope of zero. Now if we rotate over here and we're going to say, okay, this is at uh, pi over four. So my next spot will be pi over four. My sine and my cos are both root 2 over 2, so since the numerator and the denominator are the same, I get a value of 1. Since they're both positive, it's a positive one. <clears throat> now let's go over to pi over 2. So for pi over 2, now my, my sine value is 1 and my cos value is 0, so I get a 1 over 0. So what happens when you divide by 0? Yeah, you get an undefined. Okay, You get a no answer. Uh, so we're going to see in a second that this is going to cause something, and when we graph it, this is going to cause something called an asymptote. Uh, hmm, I'll try to spell that one again. A-S-Y, and then it's a M P. T O T asymptote. So we we saw them before in in our graphing earlier. With uh, whenever we have denominators of zeros, we end up getting these asymptotes. Now the next place we'll go to is over here. This will be um, three pi over four. That's this spot here, three pi over four. And similarly, um, my sine and my cos. My sine is going to be positive, and my cos will be negative. But they're the same value, so I get a one. But in this case, it's going to be negative one. Uh, now when I go all the way over here to pi, uh, it's my sine divided by my cos, so it's 0 divided by negative 1, which is 0. And now I will just finish this up. I get 5 pi over 4, uh, 3 pi over 2, uh, 7 pi over 4, and then 2 pi and my answers here, you'll notice that the pattern kind of starts over. Where here I'll get a 1 at 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2 is over here. Again, my sine is negative 1 and my cos is 0. So I'm dividing by, dividing by 0. So I get another undefined. And I'm going to get another asymptote here. Uh, and then I get a negative 1 and then I get a 0 again. So what would that look like if we graph it? So if we, let's go over here and see if we can put it on this little graph. So uh, when x is 0, y is 0. So we're going to be starting at the origin. Uh, at pi over 4, so here's pi. This is pi over 2. This would be pi over 4. Here, I'll make these little notations. At pi over 4, we're all the way up to 1. So you recall that for uh, sine and for cos, that's the maximum usually, right? And it takes quite a while to get. For sine to get up to 1, you know, it isn't up until over here. So this takes off really, really quickly. And then at pi over 2, so this is at pi over 2, this is where we have the asymptote. Now it's a little bit hard for me to draw one. I'll, I'll try. I'll bring it out in green here. So usually what we do is we draw a dashed vertical line. So it's going to go right through pi over 2, like that. Good. Okay, so moving on, then at 3 pi over 4, we're down here at negative 1. So it's some real dramatic changes over here. Then at pi, we're back up to 0. And then we're going to have these the same pattern repeating again already. Um, so at this would be 5 pi over 4. We're at 1 already again. And then this is 3 pi over 2. I'm going to have my second asymptote. And it is a vertical asymptote, just like that. All right, now moving on to uh, 7 pi over 4 is a negative 1 over here again. And then 2 pi, we're back up to 0. 
Uh, so what does this look like? Well, I'll show you the general shape here. So starting here, it's going to take off quickly and go upwards, and it curves. It's a bit of a curve, and I'm putting an arrow at the end of there. And so you remember how the behavior of a line goes when it approaches an asymptote. It gets close to it, but it never quite touches it, and this line goes off to infinity up there. And then on the other side of that, it comes from negative infinity, and it's going to have this kind of a shape. So um, generally, the tan has this kind of look to it, it has a little change of direction as it crosses that x-axis and we'll put some arrows over there and again it's going to do the same thing over here okay so there, there's our little sketch as always um, rather than drawing it by hand you can do a much better job if you actually type it in so here here is that y is equal tan of x and we can see um, how it repeats isn't it the behavior now is repeating well, not every 2 pi like sine of for cos, but now it's repeating every pi. So we say that the period would be equal to pi, wouldn't it? And the vertical asymptotes are not drawn in by Desmos. It's not drawn in by the TI-83 or by GeoGebra. It's something that these graphing calculators are generally not very good at. So here, we'll put one in. So if I move my screen, I'll manually put this one in, and I'll manually put that one in. So those are the vertical asymptotes. Um, so... Let's take a look then at the rest of our, our notes here on the next page. It says, here are the properties of, of tan x. Um, so let's talk our, our, through this here. So first of all, the domain. Now what the domain means, what are all the possible x values that you can have for tan? So looking at all the possible x values, it's a bit different than for sine and for cos. So I'll just get rid of tan for a second. So for sine is continuous there's no breaks in this line so for domain it's all real numbers for tan there's definite breaks the, there are these uh, vertical asymptotes we're not allowed to put in a um, a value at these asymptotes so we're going to um, describe it this way so the asymptotes are at all the intervals of pi over 2 now in this definition they use n you can use k again, and I'm not sure why they switched to n, but it really doesn't make any difference. So you could say k pi, where k is all the integers. Um, and this, to tell you the truth, this would be enough of a statement here, if you if you wrote all that. You don't necessarily have to start off with x as a member of all real numbers, but it's a, it's a good way to start. So reading this in math notation would be x is a member of all real numbers such that x cannot be equal to pi over 2, uh, plus any integer multiple of pi. So um, it does not, so this gets uh, added together. So the first one would be uh, pi over 2 if n is equal to 0, right? And if n is equal to 1, it would be 3 pi over 2. And when n is equal to 2, it would be 5 pi over 2. So in a way, we say this is a way of describing this would be the odd pi the odd halves, the odd pi over twos, one pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two. And that's the pattern that we see just switching back over here. Um, so this is at, oh, kind of hard. Well, this is this is pi over, there we go. That's pi over two. Uh, this is another pi over two. And then this next asymptote would be, uh, oh, I want to change this here. Let's get the settings better. If I say, show me every pi over two. Will it do it for me? I mean, if I take it off projector mode, let's just play with this. Sometimes they give me more settings then. Oh, actually, I want it to maybe pi over 4. Okay, so at 3 pi over 2 would be another... 3 pi over 2 would be another vertical asymptote right there. And at 5 pi over 2 would be another vertical asymptote over there. Okay, so there, there's the domain. Uh, the range is all of the possible y values. And unlike uh, sine and cos, remember, sine and cos, uh, it was always between negative 1 and positive 1, right? That was the definite, hat. it had a maximum, and it had a minimum of positive 1 and negative 1. Here, because tan takes off and goes up to um, positive infinity and comes back down from negative infinity, and there, there's these arrows that keep on going, there is no limit to the range. So here, you could also say that y is a member of all real numbers. You could also write it this way, or you can write from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, uh, You might want to make a note here for tan. Uh, tan does not have amplitude. Okay, uh, So to ask what is the amplitude of tan, you'd say there is no amplitude. It's You can't put a, a limit on this, and similarly, um, 
there's no maximum or minimum. So we don't use those terms with tan. What are the zeros? Zero is another way of saying what are x-intercepts. Okay, so when does tan hit the x-intercept? So here is a place where it hits the x-intercept at pi and at 2 pi. And if I scroll it over, again, it crosses at 0. Let me go back to projector. I like it nice and big. So it crosses at 0, it crosses at pi, it crosses at 2 pi. So that's a nice easy one to remember. It's all the multiples of pi. And so this is how we make that statement. x is equal to some integer multiple of pi, where n is the number of integers. Uh, where does it cross the, the, y, the y-axis? At the origin. So y is equal to 0. What's the period? And we've seen this before in our questions from the previous chapter. While while sine and cos have a period of 2 pi, tan has just a period of pi. And uh, what are the equation of the asymptotes? It's going to be the same, right? Same as the restrictions of the domain, okay? So where, where x cannot be, that's where an asymptote is. Um, so you should be able to figure those out. And um, you'll recall that we kind of had a, a shortcut remembering about sine starts at the origin and goes up. Right, uh, cos starts at a maximum and then comes down. So how can we re we remember uh, tan? Well, I guess the one part is it does cross at the origin. That's a e good uh, place to remember. And another easy one to remember is uh, I guess two things that pop up in my mind is that the period is equal to pi. So if it crosses at the origin, the next place is going to cross at is at is at pi. Okay. Uh, so halfway in between that is when we have the vertical asymptotes. So um, the shape again kind of has this look to it, right? And then we have this vertical asymptote at pi over two, and then we have this shape to it again, okay? You don't have to get perfect with it, but it should have that a little bit of that curve into it. And then that next uh, vertical asymptote, again, it's a, it has a period of pi. So when we jump a pi over this, it'll be three pi over two. Okay, because it jumps uh, another period of pi. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, here's your homework on page 262, 238, and part C, question number one.